John Dillingham. I'm an actor. I've been acting for about 30 years now. I've been in about 120 commercials. I've been in 60 plus films and 22 national TV series. And I've had the opportunity to act with a lot of big name actors and I hope there's more to come. So Sean, thank you so much for sitting down with me today that we were finally able to get this happening. Let me ask you, what do you think people's first impression of you is? Uh, oh, geez, I don't know. I don't want to know. Hopefully positive, you know, I don't know when I, as a person or as an actor, as an actor, when I walk in the room, I always try to let my, uh, I don't want to say ego, but my confidence walk into the room. I, I want to let the uh, producers, the casting directors, everybody know when, when I walk in the room that, uh, relax, I know what I'm doing. And, uh, I would be a, a good addition to their project. Um, I think confidence kills and I think uh, the camera picks it up and I think people pick it up when, when you first meet them, you know, you walk in the room and you go, hi, uh, geez, wow. These lights are bright. Uh, Oh, I really have, you know, if you go in with that air of desperation, if nervousness or like, God, I really, really, really want to get this, you're not going to get it. But if you walk in and you're like, all right, everybody, forget everything you saw before, because here we go. They like that. They like somebody who's confident that they're like, yeah, bring that to my, bring that to my script, bring that to my project. So I don't know. I, I hope uh, first impression is a, is a strong, positive addition to any any project you know that's what i hope anyway so now as a person oh. <laughs> uh, at the grocery store just I, out in everyday life uh, not on set happy content polite polite because manners are few and far between anywhere in the world anymore and i think to make the world a better place you know that's really where it starts by I, I was raised by, you know, when you walk in front of somebody at the store, you go, sorry, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, or hold the door, you're welcome, you know, or no, please, after you, and people anymore look at you like, yeah, you better hold the door, and you're just like, what is going on, and it's not, it's not young people, it's young people, it's old people, it's everybody, and it's, I think that's where it starts, just consideration for your fellow human beings, so. I, I hope people say I'm a nice, considerate person. Uh, as, as an actor, as a teacher, as a director, I, um, I would call myself passionate, driven. Um, I, I, I am not one of those teachers or directors that like to placate people or tell them what it is they wanna hear. Oh, you are so good, look at you. Yes, you're so good. I'm one of those guys that expect more. I always tell people in my classes, I, I'm not the kind of teacher that tells you what you want to hear. I'm the guy that's going to tell you what you don't want to hear. Because if I placate you, you are never going to grow. But if like the trainer at the gym, I push you and I go one more rep, one more, one more, then you'll grow. So kind of a hard ass I've been told, but, uh, I don't expect anything less from myself, so I wouldn't want anything less from anybody else. And all of that makes perfect sense. You know, what you said about the confidence in your role as an actor is, um, is exactly on a spot on, because I think if you don't believe in yourself, how can you expect others to you know, believe I, in you? It's what you said about um, the, again, the manners and coming back to that. Mm -hmm. It's almost like the world has been covered in this entitlement blanket. Yeah. And everyone hides under it. And I feel like that makes us disrespectful, not only to ourselves, but to the people around us. And yeah. that's part of my motivation for doing these interviews is to give people the space to tell their story sure. and to share their truth and to not have it, you know, a judgment passed on them for who they are and where they've been. Speaking of where they've you got, I think you got to take that that little piece of happiness, that little ideal world and, and put it in your heart and take it with you. Because a lot of people will look at television shows or, or movies and go, God, 
I wish I lived in a place like that. I wish I lived in Mayberry. I wish I lived, you know, and you know what? Then put it in your heart and take it with you and, and give that out to the world. You know, when you see a little old lady in line, you go, ma'am, would you like to go in front of me, please? You're, you're absolutely, you're welcome. Little things like that go such a long way to refer to people, yes, ma'am, yes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. After you. It's just that goes such a long way and people don't do it. So Sean, where are you from originally? Well, I was born in Europe. My father was in the army and I was born in uh, Germany. And then we sort of bebopped around the United States everywhere from San Francisco, Arizona, Texas, Alabama, Georgia, North Carolina, Virginia, all over. But primarily, I would say I was raised in Arizona. We lived in Yuma, then we moved. Then we moved to Tucson, then we moved, then we moved to Phoenix. And so here we settled. So did you always want to be an actor? No, I, well, I was very shy as a kid. Very like, didn't want to go to school, had panic attacks because I would go into the halls and there'd be all these kids milling about and I was just like, sensory overload. And um, when I was in the sixth grade, uh, I didn't even volunteer is one of those things where the teachers go, and you're going to be the tree, and you're going to be the rock, and you're going to be, and we, we did a school play, and, and I, I did it, and I, I loved it. I just absolutely loved it. I was like, man, you know, to hear people clap and all those faces on you, I was like, this is great. <clears throat> and then I uh, had the opportunity to be in a city parade. And that was, you know, myself on a float it was Ben Franklin holding a kite. And uh, after that, I was just like, oh, this is great. Because it allowed me to come out of my shell because it wasn't me. It wasn't me on stage. It was this other character that I was playing. And I did it through junior high and high school and community theater and professional semi professional theater and then um, one time at a, a theatrical production, an agent saw me and came up and said, I want to sign you. And I was 22 at that time and started doing commercials and films and TV shows and movies and all that. I said films and movies, all the above. <laughs> so do you think that all the moving around had an impact on why you were kind of introverted and shy? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because I never was allowed to put roots down. You know, I, I lived in Yuma and then we moved and the, where we moved to the people were like, you're new. We don't like you. We're kids. We're judgmental. And then I moved back to Yuma and they would be like, oh, you're back. And then we'd move. And then people were like, you're new. We don't like you. And then I'd move to another place and they're like, you're the new kid. And it never allowed me to put roots down anywhere. So, uh, yeah, definitely. I, I, I became very shy because of that. I can empathize with that. I um, went to a different high school every year in a different um, city or state. Yeah. And your parents think, well, you're, you know, you're getting such diversity and you're seeing the world and you're like, you're ripping me out of the ground by the roots. Yeah. And all those great things that I get to be part of, you know, dances and football games and friendships. That's all <laughs> because you move from one place and, and go somewhere else. And then you come back to that place. And then you move again, then you come back to that place. People are like, you're always moving. You're weird. I mean, kids are brutally honest and brutally judgmental. So what can you do? You know, in the meantime, they're always there in the same place, building friendships, putting down roots. It, it was tough. It's tough to find yourself when you move so much, because as you grow, you gain, you know, sense of self and sense of community. And when you don't have a community to, like you said, plant roots in, mm -hmm. it's kind of, I, I know, I know because I was there, difficult. And kids nowadays couldn't possibly understand. They can't even wrap their head around a world that A, didn't have cell phones, uh, B, didn't have internet, and your TV had five channels. I mean, <laughs> thank God for books. Because, I mean, there weren't VCRs, there weren't movies, videotapes, DVDs, there was nothing. It was like five channels, your imagination, a tree to climb or a bike to ride. And that was it. And nowadays, you know, people are like, I'm moving, but they're still all connected to all their friends on social media, phone calls, FaceTime. It's, it's unbelievably connected nowadays. Yep. 
<coughs> Excuse me. Do you have siblings? I do. I have uh, two brothers and a sister. Were they close in age to you? So was the impact the same for them? Um, there's about between my 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 sister's the oldest. The next brother's a year younger than her, and the next uh, brother is eight years from that brother. I was the youngest, so there was between myself and my my oldest of siblings. You know, a fifteen year age difference. So, yeah, they they were already off doing the terrible things they did as teenagers. What is something that would surprise people to know about you? Um, well, that I'm, I'm a homebody. I'm yeah. Happy, I, I, I'm happily married. I have four kids. I have a grandchild, a little grandson now. And, you know, out of bad things can come good things. And this pandemic has really made me enjoy just being home, just sitting in, in a chair next to my wife, watching a movie together having dinner together. That's just, you know, that's, that's the best for me going and doing, you know, movies and being on sets, you know, that's, that's just work. That's just what I do. But I just, I really love being at home. A family guy. I love that. Absolutely. How long have you been married? 33 years. Congratulations. That's Thanks. beautiful. Yeah, we were teenagers when we met. Where did you meet? At a, at, this is back when malls were the thing. Yes. Yeah, we met at, at a mall in Mesa, Arizona, and uh, that was at Smitten. And we, I was eighteen. All my siblings were much older than me before they moved out of the home, and I was eighteen and went, "See ya, <laughs> bye, we're out of here." So, and just stuck it out and been together ever since. That's beautiful. And you said four children. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. And a grandchild, you said too, right? Yeah. Three boys and one girl and a little grandson. How exciting. What a beautiful, beautiful story. Yeah. They're awesome. I love my family. You mentioned when we were talking earlier about um, people's perception, you said as a teacher and as a director. So you've done so much more than acting, but I'm really curious about the teaching. Well, I, I teach acting. I teach scene study. I teach uh, improv because I've studied with Second City, the Groundlings, Iowa West, and Upright Citizens Brigade. And I have seen improv done on another level. Uh, I, I even got a great compliment when I went to Second City. My, my instructor looked at my resume and he was like, why are you here? You could teach this class. And I said, because I wanna go through the curriculum. I wanna go through the program. I don't wanna, I don't want, I don't want credit for time in. I don't want to be moved up to the front of the class. I want to be just, you know, treated like let's just basic stuff. I want to learn from the ground up. And so um, I've been doing improv for oof, 30 years. You know, I love, I like, I like doing live theater, but here's what I discovered about myself very early on. I love performing, but I hate rehearsing. So if somebody ever says to me, we're just going to improvise this scene. I'm like, oh, beautiful. Uh, so uh, in, in doing that, I, I, I eventually found through theater people, they were like, you know, you should look into improv. And I was like, what's improv? And uh, they were like, well, that's kind of like Saturday Night Live. You just kind of make it up in the moment. And I'm like, you mean I don't have six to eight weeks of rehearsal? You got it. I'm going to look into that. Um, the improv is really my go-to. And I have seen the world of acting graduate more toward that because now – Casting directors in Los Angeles and places that I go are like, oh, I have three pe 300 people coming in and I, I don't want to see 300 people doing the same thing all day. I just want to see if they're good and if they can be real. So oftentimes you'll go into a room and they'll go, OK, here's the scenario. You're in the desert and you're one of you is Russian, one is uh, American and you're you're exchanging money for diamonds. OK, so let's just see what you can do with that. And I'm like, yeah. And the other actors are like, you're kidding. So, um, but that's really where I, I love swimming in deep water. When we, when we can improvise, I'm like, hell yeah, let's do that instead. That's more fun. So I've been, I've been teaching that for about uh, eight, eight years. How to be more in the moment, how to be more creative in the moment, how to be more of themselves. I know a lot of actors that are trained and trained and trained. And I've studied Meisner and I've method acting and 
and then you tell them to act and they're robotic. Well, I was, you know, be sad. Okay, be sad, sad. All right. What happened that made me sad? What happened before? What brought about this sadness? Can you just, can you just be sad? You know, and the beautiful thing in, in auditioning for commercials or TV shows or movies is with improv, somebody says, be sad. And I can go, <laughs> be happy, <laughs> be angry. Come on. You can. You learn just in the moment to go with it. Don't think, go, just do it. You know, you said, um, you know, teaching people to be more in the moment. And that reminded me of something that you said a moment ago about being in the room in an audition and they want to see you be authentic. I would think that people may have a trouble understanding if you're acting, how can you really be authentic? So if you're being someone else, so maybe answer that. I'll tell you, because sometimes when actors come to me, I have to actually unteach them because they come to me and I go, first of all, what is the secret to acting? Do you know? Memorizing scripts. No, that's good. Uh, being expressive. No, that's good too. Well, being loud. Well, that sometimes that's good. No, you know what it is? Here's the secret to acting, creating empathy, creating emotions that everyone in the room or everyone watching can relate to that they're drawn in they see that emotion on your face and they're pulled into it and they feel what you're feeling how many times have you been sitting in a movie theater or watching a a movie or a tv show and you're like (laughs) and you look around the room and everybody's like (laughs) that's that that's empathy. That's what the actor has to strive for. And sometimes I have to unteach them because they have these methods in their mind of this is how I was taught to be sad. And I'm like, in improv, I don't, I don't care what you're taught. I want to know, you know, how is, how does Leslie get sad? How does Leslie get angry? Because there's some people that get angry and they're like, I'm going to flip over anything in this room that is not nailed down and yell and scream. And other people get angry like, oh, no, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. So I don't want you to show me your method that you've learned of how you should be sad or angry. I want to see what it is for you. Show me how you get angry. Show me how you get sad then you start to express yourself in a scene naturally how you would do the character not well this is how i think it should be just do it how you think it should be done empathy is the key Mm -hmm. i know i can relate to exactly what you're saying with things that i watch and have seen Mm -hmm. and and we all want that connection and i think that's why we're drawn to certain things that we do watch because they have the characters that we can relate to and everyone relates to people differently which is why different shows appeal to different people and why there's so many things out there for all of us and it sounds like you have done so many different things and now you have sat down with me for this really fun conversation i've learned so much today today. about you um about connection, about where you've been and and what in your underbelly motivates you. I know we talked about a few topics only and I know you have so many stories that we could probably talk for hours, but I got so much out of those stories and for that, I'm grateful. Well, I'll tell you this, I'll tell you this before we wrap up because I picked up pretty quick that you were wrapping up. <laughs> You're so smart. <laughs> I, I had a uh, a great compliment recently that after 30 years, I was like, that was pretty cool. I've had people say nice things to me on set, some big name actors. But recently I did this TV show, Magoo, uh, I'm shooting this TV show. And I, my scenes are with Kristen Wiig and Ryan Phillippe. And they were just, they just kept constantly saying, oh my God, you are so funny. You are so funny. And I'm just like, do me a favor. Say that again real quick. Just, I just want to get it on tape. Say it again. <laughs> little moments like that is what keeps you going absolutely and I agree with them you are funny I have laughed a ton during this and I know that I'm not on camera while you're talking but for those that have watched my this has been on the whole entire time and my cheeks hurt from smiling and I am truly grateful for your time and your patience and your consideration and your willingness to come on and talk to the little old me Thank you. I appreciate it. Before we part for the evening, I would love to just ask you one final question. Sure. 
as you're going about being a wonderful dad and husband and teacher and actor, if you could hold up a sign that says one thing about Sean, what would you want people to know about you? Um, oh man, I have a great saying too. And I say, I'm going to look, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to look at my phone because <laughs> I saw this recently and I was like, that is going to be my personal philosophy from now on because I, I just absolutely loved it. And I'm going to, I'm going to put it right here so I look natural like I know what I'm saying. Are you ready for this? Because this is, it's so applicable in, in any avenue of life. And that is hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard right just leave it there for a second okay